Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In the previous part, we talked about the structure of the body wall seen in case of sponges and we also discussed the types of canal systems which we see there. Now in sponges, let us talk about the various systems which they exhibit. So first is nutrition and mode of digestion. So nutrition and mode of digestion. Nutrition is the way they obtain their nourishment. So they are holozoic. and digestion is intracellular. Holozoic means they are going to take solid food in and the digestion is going to take place inside the cell. So intracellular digestion. The next is respiration and excretion. Respiration means gaseous exchange and gaseous exchange takes place by diffusion through body surface. So body surface acts as the area through which gaseous exchange takes place. Excretion is also through body surface. The nitrogenous waste which sponges eliminate is ammonia. So they are ammonopelic. Now there is no requirement of circulatory system as this water is only helping in providing or circulating whatever is required. So the water which comes in through ostea brings in that dissolved oxygen which the cells take individually and this water only is helping in removal of carbon dioxide as well as the nitrogenous waste. Now let us talk about another process that is reproduction. In case of sponges, both types of reproductions are seen that is asexual and sexual. Asexual reproduction as well as sexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction is by budding and budding can be exogenous or endogenous. Exogenous or endogenous. Exogenous means a bud is formed outside the body which is the very common one. And endogenous means the bud is formed inside. So bud is inside. And this bud which is formed inside or these endogenous parts, they are known as gemules. So gemules help in perination or propagation. That means the buds would be released. So if we see the outer part, the bud may develop on the outer body. And in case of endogenous buds, these gemules will be formed on the inner side. So this is going to be the gemule, which are endogenous buds. Multiple buds would be formed inside and then once the bud is fully formed, it will be released from the osculum. Now what exactly is the structure of this gemule? So if we talk of gemule, it has a collection of cells which are known as the archaeocytes and these archaeocytes are the totipotent cells. Totipotent means each cell has the capacity to give rise to a complete organism and this or this mass of the cell is surrounded by a gelatinous material. So here is a membrane which is going to hold all these cells and there is an opening here which is called the micropyle. So this opening is micropyle and the gelatinous material which is going to prevent these 
archaeocytes from desiccation or drying. So these cells, they are archaeocytes. And these cells, archaeocytes are totipotent cells. That means they have the capacity to give rise to a complete organism. And that is why we say that sponges, they have a very high power of regeneration. Now in this outer gelatinous material, we find that there are spicules. And most of these spicules which are there, they are unbranched, needle-like. So gelatinous material is going to prevent these cells from drying. And these spicules, which are called monoexonic spicules, monoexonic spicules, they protect this mass. Now, these gemmules, they are going to freely float in water. When they come in contact with the substratum, they attach to the substratum with the micropyle towards the substratum. So if this is the micropyle, they are going to attach to the substratum upside down. And from here, all the cells are going to come out. They aggregate to form the body of the sponge. So exogenous bud is just an outgrowth and endogenous bud is gemmule and this is the structure of gemmule. Now, if we talk about sexual reproduction, then the sponges, they are hermaphrodite. That means one sponge has both the sex organs, male as well as female sex organ. And we have seen when we were talking about the basics of animal kingdom, that if an animal is hermaphrodite, <clears throat> it still prefers or wants a cross fertilization to take place. And one such adaptation which helps is protogyny or protandrous condition. So here, some of them show protogynous condition. That means the female sex organ is going to mature first, female gamete will be formed first, and the male gametes are formed later. Fertilization in case of sponges is internal and the development is indirect. Indirect means there is larval stage which is formed. So in this case if we talk here there are larva which are formed or larval stages. There are two types of larvae which are seen and these larvae one is hollow it is one is solid one is hollow one is called parenchymula and the second one is known as amphiblastula this parenchymula larva both of them are free floating parenchymula is solid and amphiblastula larva is hollow and amphiblastula also shows one more very unique feature that half of its body is flagellated and half of its body is non-flagellated and scientists believe that it is the flagellated part which gets invaginated and that forms the spongocele which is covered with coanocyte and the non-flagellated cells they form the outer part. So this is how reproduction is going to take place. If it is sexual, then gamete formation, fertilization in internal, development is indirect, there is a larva stage which is formed. Larva can be solid or hollow. Asexual reproduction is by budding and these buds can be endogenous or exogenous. We have already seen the types of skeletons that they have, endoskeleton, it can be calcareous or siliceous. Now in the next part, we'll talk about the classification of porifera, how we classify them and we will also discuss certain important examples.